Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to another how-to video. As you can see, I brought myself a new white desk making me officially a YouTuber now. But anyway, I'm going to cut to the chase because I want to get the time of these vlogs down a little bit to make sure you're getting as much value as possible in as short a time as possible. I'm going to tell you how I'll be setting up viewings and I'm going to be showing you the spreadsheets I use as well and the questionnaire for viewings as well. So stay tuned if you want to see those bits and pieces. Here he is, the number one best barber. <laughs> well, new haircut done. I'll just smart myself up. I'm heading over to my accountants. I'm going to get a new interview for another YouTube video. I think for anyone looking to open a limited company or, or worrying about the different stages of it or if they should this is going to be a really good interview for you so stay tuned hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel i thought i'd come with a different type of video this week and i'm going to interview my own accountant who is peter jarman of pjco welcome peter hello everybody <laughs> Hello, we're back for the last final segment of this video in which I want to, as mentioned, I want to keep quite short but also give you as much value as possible. I think it's quite important, first of all, just to quickly touch on the difficulties in my week. Everyone has good weeks and bad weeks. Unfortunately, this has been perhaps a slightly worse week for me. I mean, it could have been a lot worse, don't get me wrong. I'm just having a few car issues. You know, I've spent quite a few thousand pounds on the car within the last six months. And then I've also just found I've got quite a bad oil leak, which has damaged a lot of the new parts I've had replaced. And it's also going to potentially push back my trip to Liverpool. I'm just trying to work around uh, how I'm going to get around that, basically. So we all have good weeks, we all have bad weeks. That's been my issue this week, and it's going to cost me at least, you know, another thousand pounds which brings me on to the importance of running a contingency fund. Not many people discuss this, but a contingency fund is so important in property as well as just life. I have always run a bank account in which I try and have at least a few thousand pounds in for things that come up in life. And a lot of people are messaging me right now and they're saying, I've got, for example, 14,000 pounds. I need, only need 15 or 16,000 pounds as a deposit and the fees to buy this house. So I just go for it. And my opinion is always no. At very minimum, you should have all of the costs that you need to buy the house plus maybe 10% more. You know, at least if you're buying something which is going to cost you 16,000 for the deposit and the fees, you should at least have 18,000 because you have no idea what's going to come up in uh, uh, you have no idea what's going to come up in terms of expense on that house or in your life. So it's always better to overplay it and you know what three months in property is nothing if you're going to be spending 30 years investing in property so you're much better to wait off you know wait for three months rather than overstretch yourself and everything fall through because you've run out of money and you know you're not a procrastinator for waiting three months if you wait for three years that's different but three months properties are still going to be there to buy now I'm going to move on to just sharing my screen with you to show you exactly what I use for just shortlisting properties, arranging viewings and some of the questions I ask on viewings. This is a really basic document. As you can see this is a complete template that I've made up just for the purpose of this video, hence why I've made up the street name as 25 YouTube Street and they're all the same property. But normally this would be a list of lots of different properties lots of different purchase prices as you can see what i do is i like to go on and estimate roughly what i think the rent might be and then the rent per annum and then what i use is something called a yield now a lot of people get this wrong and i get some really funny comments about how i've worked out yield wrong or i'm using yield instead of roi but if i'm effectively looking at 20 30 houses i'm not going to be sitting there and working out the roi to work out the roi you've got to know what your expenses are on that property so that you can work out the profit per month and profit per annum 
you're not going to be wanting to work out that on 30 houses when 29 of them are going to be a waste of time to you. So what I like to do is I like to work out the yield of the property. I quickly work out and establish whether I think it's there's potential, then I go out, I'll view them all, I'll then come back, and then if I shortlist one or two properties after viewing 30 or 40, I then sit down and I work out the ROI on each of those properties. That's how I like to do it. Again, I'm sure there's much better ways of doing it. That's my personal opinion. As you can see on this sheet, there's also a couple of properties that I've marked in red. That's because as time is going on, especially with things moving a bit quicker at the moment, properties are selling, going under offer. I still want to know about them. I still want to track them and follow them in case they come back to the market. Uh, moving on to the next sheet, which is my viewing schedule. So, I mean, super basic. I literally start calling the agents. And then when it comes to arranging the viewing itself, what I will do is of course try and group viewings together based on the area. But even more so, what I'll do is when I'm about to call up a property and book it in with the agent, what I will do is I will have a look at the listing itself. For example, what I'm bringing up here, say I had decided on this house here, which is Day Street. If I decided that I wanted to view this property, before giving the agent a call, I'd actually click on the estate agents themselves. I'd actually go on the view properties option and just check that they haven't got anything else that's nearby within the same price range that actually it's really worth viewing. You know, if I'm out viewing one with them and then there's one, two streets down on for a similar price with them, you need to go and view that, you know, and in this instance, it wasn't a good example because they actually had nothing else on offer, but it's just a really good way of utilizing your time. And if you're calling the agent, you might as well book them in then. You don't want to call the agent and then 10 minutes later realize they've got another one down the street you wanted. Book them in at the same time, you know, and, and work your diary effectively, especially if you're going up there for one, two or three days, you really need to maximize your times in your diary. Moving back, once I've booked in my viewings, as you can see, what I personally like to do is actually highlight them in yellow if they're not booked in. So as you can see from here, you know, this one's being arranged with a tenant. Jason, who I spoke to, is gonna come back to me to confirm viewing time and day. So I wanna keep that in yellow just to make sure that I know it's not booked in and that I can chase it up nearer the date that I'm going there if needed. Moving on to um, my viewing questionnaire. I don't actually print anything off and take it with me, but I have a list of questions in which I like to ask an agent, and here they are. So the viewing questions I like to answer, very simple, very basic, but it's owner's situation, have there any, been any previous offers? If there have, what are the previous offers? Now the agent can't tell you, but you could try and have a bit of a, a you know, a bit of fun with them and, and try and build up a bit of rapport off the back of that. And sometimes they might give you a very close indication of what the offer might be. So that if you do like it, you have an idea of what you might need to pay. I also like to know how long the owner's owned it. You know, it gives a good reflection on, on what's going on in the area, what kind of people are living there. Uh, rental demand, you know, the agent works, lives there potentially. So they're going to know the area really well. And ask them what kind of tenant you might get. You know, what type of tenant might be renting there. And then just something else I like to do when I'm viewing the property, I'd always like to try and take pictures of the boiler, electrical box, alarms, you know, any potential repairs or mold and so on. Once I've left the house, draw the floor plan on just a notepad if they haven't got one uh, on their website. And I'll also check and take photos of the roof and also give myself a rating on what I, my opinion is of the area. You know, if I see any of the neighbors and the condition of the surrounding houses. So just something to remember once you've left that property, done loads of other viewings, and you can try and come back to visualizing what that house was like when you were there. Um, I hope all of that was really helpful. As I say, I'm trying to keep it short. So if you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments box. I'm not able to keep up with the DMs and emails at the moment. So if you want a quick response, usually within 24 to 48 hours, drop it in the comments box and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it and I will see you next week.